Hey guys, this is tutorial number six, and what we're going to do is we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, so far we've been working with pretty much the same scene this whole time. Uh, for this tutorial I've made a, a completely brand new scene. Um, actually no, I deleted a bit, just about everything in the old scene. And uh, I did keep a couple things like the flare, the lighting, and the skybox, although I did change the skybox. Um, so here you can actually create whatever you want. Um, just make sure that the front perspective is looking straight ahead at it and that when you're looking at it from the right that's your platformer so we're doing a 2D platformer right now and this is basically what you see in the game as you jump through these different obstacles um, and make sure you align them the right way and then your player here which is still the same player we're using before but he has a brand new uh, completely different um, script attached to him for movement Another thing that I changed was the camera. You'll notice the camera is not locked to the player anymore. That's because when you have a side scroller, you want to look. Uh, even though you could have this follow the player, when the player turns around, the camera would follow and turn around, which you don't want. So you want the camera fixed right here, and this has its own script too. So actually, let's get started with the the camera first. Uh, again, what I did is I made sure that it was set facing down the x-axis. So it's looking straight towards it. And then uh, I set the other rotations to zero. And then I created this script here. Actually, uh, this is one of the scripts I found online. Uh, and it's pretty simple. Basically, you have your target. And the target is going to be a transform object. The transform is simply the, the placement um, the placement of an, uh, whatever given object. And here we're leaving it open because we're going to input uh, our own target. And then the distance from player, now this wasn't in the original script, but I like to be able to control this via the inspector. So I created this variable right here. And then the function, late update does it ap updates after update. So it's just so you can order things a little bit better. And then we have transform position. Basically we're taking the position of the whatever we're attaching the script to. And then we're just setting it to the position of our target. Plus vector 3, which is again, it's just rays shooting out in the three directions XYZ um, and we're setting it to go uh, through the x-axis at a distance of 10 which we set here again if you don't understand this and you're lost you're not scripting that's okay you can just copy and paste uh, if you do know some programming chances are this makes pretty good sense to you um, so that's it all I did is I took that script attached it to my camera and then here this is going to be empty when you create it uh, just make sure you take your player drag it and drop it on the transform in this case I already have it but you just do it again and that way it's going to lock itself so even though it's placed right here the script is going to override whatever placement you have in your scene and it's going to lock itself to your player and then it's going to add 10 to the X direction so down this red all the way here so you're going to see it like from distance distance right here uh, next is the player now uh, before I forget another thing I did keep intact was the player the shooting animation that I, I made earlier um, but back to the player. I got rid of the new behavior script. It's not attached to the player anymore. Instead of I have one called uh, platformer controls. This one is a bit more complex so I'm not going to really get into it. Um, it took me a little while to get this figured out because I had to mix different different um, scripts that I found and kind of come up with my own stuff for a little bit for some of it. Um, but basically what you're doing here is you're setting all of these variables which are going to be your physics variables. You have gravity, the jump speed, and the speed. Um, and then this private variable here, when you set it to private, basically even though it's outside of the function update, it's not going to pop up in the inspector, but you can still access it globally. And then what we're doing here is we're basically setting um, these, diff we're using these different different methods that are built into the objects in Unity to move it. Um, and the one we're using specifically, specifically here is after we figure out which direction we want to move in, uh, we skip this, we skip this, basically we move the direction, um, sorry, it's this one right here, we use the controller, which we created up here, which is just the character controller, and then we move it, and this direction that we specified through this code, uh, over this period of time, this is like an acceleration, so that way it's not instant, uh, and then the other thing we did is a jump, and the jump is basically going to look for when you press the jump button, it's right here, when you press the jump button, it's going to move in the Y at the jump speed, which we set here as 8. 
and then we apply gravity to that. So the move direction, we're going to go basically in the opposite direction here. Uh, basically, it's going to be gravity times the delta. So again, so that time delta, so it doesn't um, move automatically. It's going to move over time. Uh, we're going to apply that gravity gra gravity gradually. Um, and last, we have this here, uh, which is probably what took me the longest to figure out. But this right here, what we're doing with this bit here is we're just rotating our ca our character. So when you're walking to the right, he's going to face right. When he's walking to the left, he's going to face left. Now again, I cannot emphasize this en enough. Um, you just have to play with this stuff and really figure it out. If you don't know any of the code, just this one works just fine. Just copy and paste it and apply it the way I've uh, shown you in different videos. Um, but here you have, you can play with these different settings depending on how high you want your character to jump and all that other stuff. And that's really all I've done. One important thing to make sure is, and I said this at the beginning, but it's very, very important that your axes are set up the same way mine are. Because this movement is based on axes uh, that the character is facing. So if this character, if you have the whole scene, instead of facing towards the Z, it's facing towards the X or the Y. It's going to completely mess everything up. So just keep that in mind. So this is what it looks like. We hit play, and we notice we I'm pressing up and down, and I can't move back and forth in space. I'm locked into these two directions with the system. Another thing is I added a jump here. So when you press the space bar, that you, and that was the code I saw uh, showed you earlier, he jumps. Walk, jump. Now, because of the, uh, the, the model, you can't really tell, tell which way he's facing. So I kept the fire, uh, the shooting script in there. So you can see I'm facing this way. And when I face the other way, he's shooting the other way. And that's basically it. This is, uh, like I said, very basic stuff. But here you have the beginnings of a 2D platforming shooting game. Um, a few things we could do, for example, to make this a little more interesting, aside from adding enemies, obviously, is uh, we can make it so that he shoots in the direction that you choose, not the direction he's facing. Uh, another thing we could do is add some moving obstacles, like platforms and whatnot. Um, and then finally, like I said, we should add some enemies. But for now, um, test this out.